about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we waited for Hi, good evening, and uh, welcome to our latest uh, GCSE Sociology live stream. I'm joined, as ever, by Vicky and Sarah. Hi, both. Hi. Hi um, and we've got 30 minutes or so coming up on life chances, so part of the stratification topic in GCSE Sociology. Um, so I think we're going to get cracking pretty much straight away, I think. But um, if you are watching us live, and it's nice to see that there's a, you know, several of you joining us, um, please do join in in the uh, live chat window. There'll be various activities that you can get involved with. If you're watching on Catch Up, and we know very many people um, do catch up with us in that way, um, you're very welcome to, and you get the... Uh, chance to maybe pause the video and have a little bit longer to think about some of these things although obviously you haven't got the live chat window to engage with us um as we go okay so i don't know who's kicking off kicking off who's first up Oh, I can kick off. Um, okay. So it was our third exam skills live session. Uh, so last week we were looking, we've so, so, sorry, we've, so far we've done the functions view. We've done the Marxist view as well. Uh, so this time we are going to look at life chances. So we're going to come away from a specific um, sociological group. But before we start, I just want to be uh, give a little bit of a call out to Louise, who was a um, big regular every single Monday last year, who's just popped up in the chat to say hi. So hello, Louise. It's nice to see you you back um we are going to kick off today with some altered vowels which uh sarah is going to do for us okay thanks vicky and hello louise from me as well we're going to start off with a couple of altered vowels to get us warmed up for the session so if we can have the first one on screen please um we're seeing here we've got a word where the vowels have been changed 
So you've got some indication there of what the word could be, and you're using your sociological knowledge of these key terms to work out what it is. So answers or suggestions for answers in the comments, please. What could I, this I think it would help, be? Sarah, if you try to pronounce this one. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the challenge there. And I have actually been practicing this. So this is do scrumenu to And Brilliant. I wonder what that could be in real sociology language. What can it be? Okay, we've got some suggestions. Let's have the answer, please, Duncan. I think, I think we've lost Sarah for a moment, but I'm bringing her back in, don't worry. So the answer was, um, absolutely, it was um, uh, discrimination. I'm just going to make sure Sarah's back in. It's saying she's in the guest room. I don't know how that happened. Sorry. Um, <laughs> try to, I'll, try, I'll tell you kick what. Her out for a just I, for I a moment. Oh, space. she's there. She's there. She's there. That's okay. Hello. Right. Sorry, I was Hello. coming into the guest room. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we did have, thanks, Duncan, for picking it up. We did have discrimination. So fantastic keyword to start us off when we're thinking about life chances, whether they are equal or not. So let's have a look at the next one. And I'd just like to say in advance, I will not be pronouncing this one. Um, what do Boring. we think? This a term that you'll probably be familiar with, um, possibly through the news as well as your sociology studies. So we've got two words here. What could this term possibly be? Amazing. We've had some correct answers coming through in the chat already. So well done, Olga. You were the first one there with the correct answer. And Duncan, if you could put the answer on the screen, it was institutional racism. Well done. What fantastic a round of applause as well there. Um, let's have a look at the next one then. So what have we got here? We've got three short words together. What could it be? And remember, we're thinking about life chances and where life chances could be limited for certain groups of people. If you put your suggestions in the comments. I love these activities. They're so good for getting your brain warmed up because they really do make you think hard. And we've got some correct answers coming in already. Well done. And it was, in fact, the gender pay gap. So if we can have that on the screen, please, Duncan. Thank you so much. So the gender pay gap. And then we can move on to the next one. What could this possibly <laughs> be? I won't be pronouncing this one either. Oh, go on. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Oh, it's quite a good one, isn't it? So I think while everyone's thinking about it, let's have a go at pronouncing this. And Vicky, feel free to correct me if you'd pronounce it differently. I okay. would go with Morganoloso Toan. Brilliant. That's why. Would you do it differently, Vicky? Any different kind of emphasis on different no, vowels? I, I, oh. No, I, no, I think you've summed it up perfectly there. Yeah, and we have got some brilliant answers coming through while we're practicing our pronunciation of non-existent words. Some fantastic answers in the chat. So marginalisation was, really was the right answer. Well. well done. Sorry, Vicky? I was really worried I hadn't spelt it right as it was coming up. I was like, oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely right. So well done to Olga and to Yoshiro who got that right very quickly. Well done. And our last one for today... And it's my old favourite, Sakul Ux Kloshuan. <laughs> and what could that be in real language, in real sociological language? What could it possibly be? We'll give you a moment because we've had some brilliant answers coming through in the chat. So let's give you a chance to make your suggestions. Remember, we're thinking about life chances. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done. Social exclusion. And these, that's just a real lovely snapshot of words that are going to be really important when we're talking about life chances today. So what do you need to know when you're looking at this topic? And of course, this is part of the stratification topic. Um, so you do need to understand stratification and that's the sociological cages 
that, that exists within. So we've got class, gender, we've got ethnicity, sexuality, disability, and age. So it's a sociological cages and some. Um, and we need to think about how each of those different groups affect life chances. We need to then recognize the main schools of thought, so our key sociological perspectives um, and their view on these types of stratification. And we also need to apply that to some of our key texts. And today we will be looking at Affluent Workers Revisited, which is the Fiona Divine um, classic study that you may be familiar with already. And if not, today we'll help you out with that. So I'm going to hand over to Vicky and we've got one of our brilliant connection spinners. Super, thank you very much. So we're going to have a couple of rounds of the Connection Spinner, which gets you to develop your application skills. And you are going to see six ways that people can be discriminated against on the next screen. So in a, hopefully they will start coming up in a second. Super. So we have the six uh, things that set the areas that Sarah has just talked us through. The random spinner is going to stand on one. And if you can give us an example of the types of discrimination that that group might face into the chat window, that would be fantastic. So, Duncan, can we spin the wheel, please? So it's going to land randomly on one of these six things. OK, so we are looking for discrimination based on sexuality. So if you can pop a couple of ideas into the chat window, if you're watching on catch up, you can pause and give yourself a few more minutes. So let's have a think. So how are people discriminated against with this in regards to their sexuality? OK, let's give you a few moments. Have a little think. Okay, some good answers coming through there. Duncan, can we have some answers on the screen, please? So firstly, and probably our most obvious one, that idea of being subjected to homophobic behaviour, um, something that is far less of an issue than it used to be, but still does exist. Um, still the fact that we have heterosexuality presented as the norm, and still we have discrimination. So less rights to marry, for example. Um, people are often, so gay couples are often seen as unsuitable for adoption, despite the fact they have the same legal rights in this respect. Well done, some good ideas coming through. Duncan, can we give the wheel a spin again please so again the same six groups coming up on the board or six ways you can be discriminated rather than six groups so let's have a look at what's going to come up this time ah so disability so let's take a moment and have a think about how people might be discriminated against based on disability so those are people who have disabilities what difficulties might they face apart from physical disabilities perhaps OK, again, pause if you are watching on catch up, give yourself a little bit of time. So have a think about this group. What sort of um, issues might they face within society based on disability? OK, some good answers coming up. Duncan, can we have some answers on the screen? Super. So the idea of negative attitudes based on stereotypes. So we kind of might look at somebody and have an opinion about what that person might be able to do. Um, seem less, less valuable to society and assumptions made about the ability to work, have children, live independently, all sorts of things there, all sorts of discrimination that people suffering from disabilities have to face. Well done. Okay, can we have the next one? So we're going to do a quick big reveal now. So I'm going to talk to you about different types, those discriminations based on the different aspects that we've just been looking at. So we're going to talk about one in particular in a moment, but let's have a think about whether you can guess which group of people we might be talking talking about. So Duncan, can we have uh, clue number one? So you're going to see a series of five clues. The big reveal will be at the bottom. If you can work out who we are talking about before we get to number five, that would be brilliant. So pop your ideas into the chat window. So clue number one, more likely to be a victim of crime. Duncan, can we have clue number two, please? More likely to be convicted of crime. So who might we be talking about in this respect? OK, number three, please. So they are less likely to obtain a highly paid job. Mm, so which group might we be talking about? Mm. OK, number four, please. Less likely to attend university. 
So remember, these are not, we're not saying that they will be victims of crime. They will be convicted, but they're more likely to be, and they're less likely to attain a highly paid job and less likely to attend university. Do we have any idea who we might be talking about? Okay, number five, please. They're less likely to gain five good GCSE passes. So what group of people might we be talking about? Hmm, let's have a think. Okay, well done. Some good answers coming in. Duncan, can we have the big reveal? So this is a life chances of the working classes. Excellent. Well done. Right, can we have the next slide up? So perfect. So the first uh, group that I'm going to talk about then is the idea of life chances and how they vary by social class. So we've just talked about that in our big reveal. So social class has a massive impact on your life chances. We've already said that working class children are less likely than others to gain those five good GCSE passes or go to university. Um, obviously being less successful at school and work also affects your diet, your housing, things like weight, mental health, life expectancy, all sorts there. And as a result, working class people are less likely to obtain highly paid jobs so they are more likely to receive less income for example um, a study by the Sutton Trust a few years ago highlighted that 75% of top lawyers in the country 60% of top doctors and 50% of all journalists and politicians actually attended fee paying schools whereas actually only 7% of people in the UK attend them overall so in addition working class people normally have much less wealth because wealth generally tends to be in Inherited. So if you're working class, you're not likely to have lots of wealth coming down from sort of the generations above you. The working classes also can face lots of prejudice and discrimination, particularly through harmful media stereotypes, which might portray them perhaps as criminals or lazy and work shy scroungers, such as TV shows like Shameless that you might have seen, Benefit Streets, which was a um, not particularly helpful documentary on Channel 4 a few years ago, even soaps like EastEnders. Um, and then finally, on top of that, working class people are more likely to be victims of crime due to sort of the environment where they might live, but also more likely to be convicted of crime as they can't afford the best legal representation that the middle and the upper classes can. So there's lots of different ways there that life chances are are affected by your social class. I'm going to hand over to Sarah now, who's going to talk to you about life chances by ethnicity. Thanks, Vicky. So what we need to be aware of here is that our BAME, members of our BAME communities are more like some groups more than others. Um, but this, but as a whole group, um, non-white groups are more likely to be unemployed and to have insecure employment if they are employed. We also know that we have an ethnicity pay gap in the UK and that the BAME community earn around 23% less than their white colleagues. And that is based even on looking at people who have similar qualifications. Um, there's also a health aspect of this in terms of life chances and we know that BAME individuals are likely to have worse health um, for, for in various different ways. But more most recently, the pandemic really highlighted that because COVID disproportionately affected BAME groups. So we're aware there that there are these, you know, there's a there are quite a different, quite a really and life chances. And we've got a second slide here on ethnicity. We can have the next slide, please, Duncan. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, we also need to be aware not just of those um, kind of health and poverty type factors, but we've also got racism factors. So we've got overt, explicit, obvious racism, which can result in prejudice, discrimination or antagonism against people. So this is the, the kind of stuff we can see very clearly. So it could be because of colour, ethnicity, nationality or race. And sometimes that gets it conflated with religion as well. We then that then can lead to racial discrimination where somebody is treated differently. That could be, affect their chances in the workplace of things like promotions, but it could affect employment and it can affect other aspects of their life as well. And then we've got the, the kind of harder to see because it's embedded in the structures and the procedures of society and our institutions is institutional racism. So when an organization's policies, this can include education, it can include the criminal justice system, 
and whether policies and procedures are in, inherently racist and it's embedded into their structures and their policies. So we've got some nice examples we can apply here. Um, George Floyd being one that has been quite recent um, that you could, if you wanted to kind of do more research on this, you could have a look through kind of social media and there's been a few documentaries. We, but we've also got Mark Duggan and Stephen Lawrence, so historical cases that um, are still really, really helpful for understanding this topic area better. And we've got statistics and studies that have found that, you know, things like stop and search, racial profiling, and the overrepresentation of certain ethnic groups in the prison system, we can see that these are some of the outcomes of this race. Um, Sarah's breaking up a little bit there. I think we've got the embedded in society and therefore affects life chances. So I'm going to hand over to Vicky. And okay, thank you very much. So we're going to have a look now at life chances by gender. So even today, in 2022, there are still different societal expectations of male and female behaviour. So, for example, women are supposed to be caring and men are supposed to be strong. And then we still have the idea of those male and female job roles. So childcare is still seen as predominantly a female provision, a profession. We also have on top of that the idea of those double standards in terms of sexuality, in terms of home life and in the workplace. So women, bosses particularly, for example, being referred to as um, ball busters. A lovely, lovely term there. Whereas men are, male bosses are often seen as strong, have been good leaders. So women still experience that gender pay gap. That was one of our uh, terms from earlier. And this tends to come down to three things. So firstly, those traditional family female roles are often low paid. So childcare, um, adult social care, beauty jobs, for example. Secondly, through family organisations. So women have to work part time sometimes around their family commitments. And lastly, through the idea of discrimination that we keep coming up with this word, that women are sometimes overlooked for the top jobs. So we hear the term glass ceiling here. Um, they might miss out as bosses fear they might have to take time off to have children, for example. And gender also, though, does affect the life chances of men. So it isn't just about females here. So particularly in terms of the expectations around masculinity. So we that term, also known as manhood or manliness, is that idea of that set of attributes, or behaviours and roles associated with boys and men, which can sometimes be quite difficult to live up to. So the idea of being tough and smart, aggressive, a provider and a protector. Um, so people, many people have argued that this is quite this has led to a crisis of masculinity. But we, at the same time, we also have this idea of the new man that's been emerging over the last couple of decades, where we have men spending more time helping with childcare and the domestic chores. We're moving away from those really traditional stereotypes, and in some cases, even becoming stay-at-home dads, which is quite common. I've got quite a few friends that have uh, that are stay-at-home dads, and many men sort of do still struggle with the fact that men used to have a really different societal advantage, but now girls girls outperform boys at school, men are more likely to be victims of crime, and they ha generally have a lower life expectancy. And there's all sorts of stats around men's mental health as well. So it's a huge issue. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at sexuality now. So this is another thing that affects your life chances. So we already said that heterosexuality is all, is presented as, as a norm for UK society, which we know would please certain groups like functions, for example. And up until 1967, homosexuality was still a criminal act, which some people find quite hard to believe. And even once legal age, the age of consent remained at 21 until 2000. So again, much higher than the age of consent for heterosexual couples. And when we think about gay couples today, there's often lots of discrimination in terms of having less rights as straight couples which we've already mentioned um, and people are still being subject to homophobia even in this day and age when we are much more tolerant as society so for example if we think about things like in the 1980s the AIDS epidemic being labeled as gay plague and section 22 some legislation that was um, that was introduced in schools in 1988 stating that schools were not allowed to promote sexuality homosexuality as acceptable in any form um, and it didn't end until 2003 which is you know bonkers so within the last 20 years that was still something we weren't allowed to talk about um luckily like i said things are getting much better there's much better representation in the media but it is still lacking in sport which is obviously quite important probably particularly for younger people um 
Now, if we think about some stats here, the UK is becoming more accepting of sexuality, but lots of people still feel they have to uh, keep their sexuality a secret from those in work, including half of all trans people who don't live as their preferred gender for fear of losing their job. And in, on top of this, um, people from the LGBTQ community are much more likely to suffer severe mental health issues. Some, some really interesting things that affect the life chances by sexuality. Duncan, can we have the next one up, please? Perfect. So people with disabilities also have lower life chances. So we, there is a clear disability pay gap, 11% for disabled men and 22% for disabled women, with disabled people overall being much more likely to be unemployed or working part-time, but not through their own choice, um, but because that's what workplaces perhaps feel they can accommodate. So discrimination tends to be even worse for people with mental health disabilities, such as depression or anxiety, um, particularly in terms of cutting benefits, but also being seen as unreliable employees, which is obviously not particularly fair. Um, so with disabilities, we did mention that people with disabilities face negative attitudes based on those stereotypes. So for example, people might assume they can't work, they might can't have children, they can't or shouldn't live independently, all sorts of things that. And on screen, we've got an image that kind of represents this and the idea that you might have come across the social and medical models of disability. So the social model of disability says that disability is caused by the way society is organised rather than by someone's impairment, whereas a medical model looks at um, people being dis disabled by their impairments or differences so the medical model essentially looks at what is wrong with a person not what the person needs and it creates an idea of low expectations which leads to people losing their independence and therefore their life chances going down right Duncan can we have the last one up perfect so the last one that I'm going to talk to you about is um fat age causing an issue with your life chances so stereotypes really reinforce discrimination based on age right across the country and it has a really huge impact on life chances of those groups so a survey done by age UK uh, age UK sorry stated that age discrimination is a uh, most form, uh, sorry, the most common form of discrimination across Europe. The worst affected groups are 15 to 64 year olds and 15 to 24 year olds. So the older groups, so 15 to 64, are often overlooked for job opportunities, are seen as less useful despite having lots of skills and experience. And the lower age groups, so the 15 to 24s, are often seen as lacking experience, knowledge and interest, and are often viewed as lazy, um, despite obviously not being a great deal of um, evidence for that. So their unemployment rate is 13%, which is really, really high. There is the 2010 um, Equality Act that makes it illegal to discriminate on the grounds of age, and it does protect people from harassment on the grounds of age, but doesn't always do enough. And Marxists would argue that age is linked to capitalism. The elderly are seen as a burden, particularly by the media, as they are too old to work and contribute. And as they earn less money, they have less spending power than other groups. And so because of the needs of capital capitalism, they're seen as unimportant. Now, feminists would argue here that older women are much more likely to experience ageism and sexism linked together with a lack of older women, for example, maybe appearing on TV. They might claim that media encourages a view that female presenters are only valuable if they are young and attractive. Now, if we think about equality, Young people can't get true equality due to various laws. So, for example, they can't drive or buy alcohol, which I think most of us will agree are pretty sensible laws. But there are things like the voting age, which many people argue is too high at 18, and many feel that 16 year olds should have the right to vote. So, a good sort of a quick whiz through of lots of different ways that people are discriminated because of different categories like age, sexuality, all sorts there. Right, I'm going to hand over to Sarah to, for a 30 second challenge. Thanks, Vicky. So we've got a couple of 30 second challenges coming up here. And the first one, as you can see on screen, is you've got 30 seconds to list all the ways that you can that ethnicity affects life chances. So this is a really good chance to consolidate the information that we've just taken you through. And your 30 seconds have started already. So feel free to put um, separate suggestions in the comments, or you could put this as a list. If you're watching at home, of course, you could, um, if you're watching, on, sorry, not at home, on replay, um, you could pause this. And that 30 seconds goes quickly. 
There we go. That's your 30 seconds up. This is a really good way to revise because you're putting your, your brain into that mode, of that speed that you need to be thinking at when you're in the exams and you're kind of seeing a question and coming up with your responses very quickly. Um, we've got some great suggestions coming through. So let's have a look at the answers on screen. So as we talked about earlier, ethnicity affects life chances because um, the BAME community are more likely to be subject to racism, whether that's overt racism or institutional racism, more likely to live in poverty and suffer from worse health. And we can see there there's an intersectionality with social class as well. Two and a half times more likely to be unemployed. And there's also the ethnicity pay gap. And we know that black employees are paid 23% less on average than their white equally qualified counterparts. Um, so well done if you got some or all of those. We're now going to do another 30 second blast um, where we're asking you, how does age affect life chances? So time is about to start. And again, we're looking at that list of all those different ways age can affect life chances. If you can get three here, you'll be absolutely winning at life. Five seconds left. And that's your time up. So we've had some really good suggestions coming through. Well done, lots of right answers. Let's have a look at the answers on screen, please. So we've got, as Vicky took us through earlier, we've got the stereotypes of young people being seen as lazy, possibly naive, possibly a threat to society. Older people being seen as inflexible, set in their ways, possibly grumpy or slow. Um, older people losing their importance, so possibly being seen as a burden within society and being seen as less economically valuable, especially if they're earning, their spending power is less significant. And the over 50s being overlooked for jobs. So we can see how life chances are affected there by age. And Vicky is going to take us through a big reveal. Thank you very much. So we are going to have a look at a key text this time. So you'll be showing a series of clues to a key text that look at life chances. They will pop up one at a time. Can you guess the answer before we get to the big reveal? So Duncan, can we have number one, please? So the concept of privatised instrumentalism was part, was linked to this study. Number two, please. Okay, so the idea that workers are home-centred and work is a means to, to an end, no collective solidarity. So what might we be talking about here? Hmm, let's have a think. OK, clue number three, please. So workers push for better wages and working conditions for themselves rather than as a collective. So can you think of any study where these ideas link? OK, clue number four, please. So this study interviewed workers at the Vauxhall car plant in Luton. Mm, so maybe a better clue there. And number five, let's have that one up. So it's a repeat of Lockwood's work in the 1960s. And actually the first three clues were linked more to his work than this study. So whose study might we be talking about? And again, if you were paying attention right at the beginning, Sarah has mentioned the study once in our session. So if you're pause, if you're watching on catch up, pause for a moment and have a think. Duncan, can we have the big reveal, please? So excellent. It's Fiona Devine's The Affluent Worker Revisited, which Sarah is just going to take you through now. So I'll hand back over to her. Thanks, Vicky. So if you were sitting there thinking, oh, no, I don't have a clue about this study. Here we are. We've got everything that you need to know. So this was a study done by Fiona Devine in the 90s. And what it was doing was it was challenging this 1960s studies that had been done um, on mm -hmm. affluent workers, which really assumed this um, privatised instrumentalism. And by that, we mean that people were seeing in the 60s, allegedly, work as a means to an end. So there wasn't a collective solidarity. There was just this idea that everyone was just working to, to really, um, you know, get through themselves. 
And what Fiona Devine found in this study, and as Vicky mentioned, this was at a car plant, um, that actually this wasn't the typical behaviour or attitudes of the working classes. And that actually they had aspirations of increased living standards and an end to inequality. So there was this kind of collective feeling of... Um, you know, meritocracy and working hard enough to change their life chances. And that really, this study really kind of demonstrates the, you know, the attitudes of working class people and, you know, the idea is that life chances are not necessarily seen as something fixed or something deterministic by everybody. Um, and Vicky is going to help us do some more consolidation now with a true or false. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, um, Again, this is consolidation of the whole session rather than what Sarah has just read out to us. So, uh, ethnic minorities are twice as likely to live in poverty as white people. Is that true or false? What do we think? Hmm. We'll get a couple of answers into the chat window. While I'm waiting for that, we've got a question coming up. It says, do we have to write, mention the date, year of the study to like Fiona Devine, like 1992? Um, you don't necessarily need to write the date, but it is always worth a sort of knowing um, what era that study was um, conducted in, because obviously that has a um, big impact on the results of that study. So knowing that it was a relatively recent in terms of sociology rather than a really old study is, is a useful thing. And obviously that it is based on, it's a response to a previous study. Okay, so we've got a couple of answers coming through there. Um, so far we think it's true. Are those people correct, Duncan? Perfect. Thank you very much. OK, our next true or false statement. An ethnicity pay gap exists between ethnic minority workers and white workers. Is this true or false? So I'll give you a few seconds to get that up into the chat window. So is this statement true or false? What do we think? OK, well done. We've got some answers coming through. Duncan, can we have the reveal, please? Again, it is true. Sarah did mention that when she was t uh, telling us about ethnic, um, life chances by um, ethnicity. And that pay gap is actually 23%. OK, let's have the next one up, please. So the Equal Pay Act means that men and women get paid the same. Is that true or false? Sounds like it should be quite obvious, but do we think that is correct? Okay, answers coming through again. Well done for your guesses. Duncan, can we have the correct answer up? So in theory, it should mean that men and women get paid the same, but men and women do not always get paid the same. And we've talked about the gender pay gap in our earlier section. Okay, next, true or false? So less than half of adults with disabilities are in paid employment. Is that true or false? And what do we think? Maybe think about why, if it is true or if it is false. So less than half of adults with disabilities are in paid employment. Is this true or false? OK, Duncan, can we have the correct answer on the screen? It is true. And again, lots of that is linked to the idea of the expectations that people have based on stereotypes that lots of people believe that people with disabilities are unreliable employees. It might be down to practical factors. Perhaps a company feels that they can't physically accommodate somebody with a disability, which is obviously something that should not be happening in this day and age. And I think we have one more true or false. It is impossible to live in poverty if you are in paid employment. Is that true or false? What do we think? So it's impossible to live in poverty if you are in paid employment. Lots of people might argue that people live in poverty because they can't be bothered to work, for example, which is, again, completely not true. Let's have a look at the answer. OK, false. So lots of people who are in poverty in the UK are actually working. Lots of them in full time employment as well. But the cost of living in our country is so high. And this is really in the news a lot at the moment, particularly last week. It was announced that energy prices will be going up and up and up. House prices are ex you know, really, really expensive at the moment. So going up, rising sort of rates that have never been seen before. Excellent. So some really, really interesting answers there. Right. I'm going to hand back to Sarah, who is going to do some exam practice and exam goal with you and then a stepping stones activity. 
Fantastic. Thanks, Vicky. So imagine this is the question that you are faced with in an assessment or an exam. Identify and explain one way in which age continues to divide society in the UK. So we're drawing on the knowledge from the session today. And if you just take a moment to have a think about what kind of responses you might bring into this question. And remember, we are looking for one point that has been developed rather than a list of several points. So on the next slide, we will have um, some suggestions for you of things you should be thinking about when you're attempting a question like this. So think about how young people tend to earn less. There's a different minimum wage bracket, um, different types of jobs that young people will be more likely to get and therefore struggling to get onto the property ladder. So that could be a point that you choose to um, bring in and develop further to gain the full four marks. You might though, instead, you might choose to focus on older employees and how they face ageism in the workplace and how this can affect opportunities for promotion um, and the way that they're treated and therefore the opportunities they're given in the workplace. Or you might focus on negative stereotypes and you might choose to talk about that for both groups or you might focus on one group in particular. So we've got a bit of exam gold here. So here's our advice for you to really, you know, hit that four out of four for these four mark questions. The examiner wants to see one argument. So we've just given you three suggestions there. Pick one and develop it in full so that you really are picking up those four marks. If you use more than one point, you will only be credited for one of them. So you really need to make the point and then develop it. Pick one key idea. So, for example, how age um, age divides the UK because young people earn so much less. And then you can talk about the lower minimum wage for younger workers. You can talk about the increasing cost of living and how that's going to affect younger workers even more. Um, and also the dramatically increasing house prices, meaning that younger workers are going to find it harder to get onto the property ladder and therefore you know, for many ways, including the property ladder, they will find it harder to be and find themselves financially secure in the future. So that's our exam gold on that four marker. And we're going to have a practice of some of those skills that you need to develop those four mark questions by having a look at a stepping stones challenge. So here your task is to complete the chain of analysis. So you can see on the screen there that stepping stone one is that younger people have a lower minimum wage, so they are likely to earn less. And at the end and stepping stone four, we've got the fact that this um, leads them to feel financially less secure compared to older people in the UK. So please take a minute to suggest what you would put as stepping stone two and stepping stone three to complete the chain of analysis. And this is a really good way of revising because quite often we see students jumping from stepping stone one to stepping stone four, which means you can't access the full scope of the question and get the full marks because you really do need to break this down to create this chain of analysis or this chain of causality, it's sometimes called. So take a moment to have a think. I can see some good suggestions coming in already in the chat. Well done. Let's have a look at our suggestions for you. So stepping stone two, we lead on from making the point. Younger people have a lower minimum wage, so they're likely to earn less. And then we say, however, their cost of living is just as high. Therefore, they're going to struggle to save money. So that's kind of developing the point a bit more. And then we use another connective there, this means. So we've used however, and then this means. Um, this means they have to rent for much longer as house prices are increasing so quickly. So this, like we're saying there's so much against them there really, aren't we? They can't save for a deposit. It's much harder for them to get on the property ladder. And we then finish that with stepping stone four, and we say which leads to them feeling much less financially secure than older people in the UK. So we've taken that right through. Um, and if you practice using however this means, which leads to, then you've got those connectives there that really help you build the analysis chain that you can pick up the marks for. Back over to Vicky. Um, I think we were going to do this one as a bonus because this is quite a, a, um, quite a long activity and we are 
probably push for time, are we, do you think, Duncan? I think it possibly getting a little bit short of time for all nine questions. Yeah, so we can, we'll have it as the, um, perhaps we'll do a couple of them and then um, people can download it and do the rest in their own time. <laughs> so I will, um, ooh, shall, what, how should we do it, Don? Should we do random numbers or shall I just go sort of one, two, what do we reckon? Well, if you want to pick the ones you want to, we will have to scroll through the others to get there. That's but, fine, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I'm going to go for then. I am going to go for, for the ones I want to. So what is a glass ceiling? Let's have a think about what is the glass ceiling. Okay, so I'll give you a couple of moments to have a think about this one. So what is the glass ceiling? We talked about it with agenda. So if you are watching on Catch Up, just pause the video for a moment. Have a little bit of a think about this key term. So what is the glass ceiling? It's something to do with gender, something to do with pay, something to do with work. OK, Duncan, can you reveal the answer? So when women can see the top jobs, but they can't get them, it is linked to gender discrimination. OK, so let's do the last question then. It links nicely to that one. What do we mean by discrimination? So what is discrimination? We've talked about it a lot during this session. It's one of those terms that students feel they understand, but don't always get the correct term if it comes up in a sort of a key term question, as in describe what we mean by discrimination. So have a think. Again, if you're watching on Catch Up, pause for a couple of minutes. Have a think about exactly what this key term means. OK, Duncan, can we have it up on the screen? So it's when that prejudice that people have turns into action. So it generally involves treating someone in an unjust or an unfair way because of perceived differences that they might have. And if we think about how that's different from prejudice, if we have a look at square or grid number four, so prejudice is about prejudging without knowledge. For example, we did mention this earlier, many bosses might assume that a woman's main priority is to get married and have children, therefore she might get passed over for a promotion, which would be the discrimination bit. Excellent. Well done on all of those um, sort of interactions that we've had with you guys tonight there are lots and lots of things on the tutor to you website that can help you out we've got revision cards all sorts of things there so do take a look if you haven't done so already and you can also find all of our previous sessions on there as well okay well done well thank you very much uh, well done vicky well done sarah what a great session lots of good suggestions from the uh, chat window there I was going to say something about Kirsty Allsop at the end, but I think we've run out of time for oh, us to yeah, do. I've just been reading she, that on Twitter. If you, if you have a look on Twitter, <laughs> her comments about wow. um, why young people can't buy houses, you might might yeah. either enrage you or interest yeah. you. So. Yeah, stop going to Costa. That's yeah. what she's telling you. Yeah, cancel Netflix and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, um, <okay>. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, Okay, and the people are saying thank you in the chat window, and thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you for your contributions, guys. Um, we will, same time next week, what topic are we going yeah. to be looking at next week? Um, we are looking, so I'm just looking on my wall, we're looking at poverty as a social issue next week, which we do know has come up in the advanced information. Mm. So be there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see you guys. We'll say yeah. Toronto. Right. Bye-bye. Well Bye. done. Thanks, everyone. Okay.